Hello everyone, today on the guide I'm going to show you how to take this and turn it into this so you can do this and get a whole lot of this. So let's go. I like building spawner farms. They're easy to do early game if you can find one and they can offer some pretty good drops for you too. For instance, we need arrows and because you know we do use the superior type of bow, the mending bow, so we do need some kind of arrows and it gives me an excuse to make another farm. So what we're gonna be doing here, it'll work for zombie spawners and for skeleton spawners. Let's find that skeleton spawner. And by let's find that skeleton spawner, what I mean is I already know where one is. <laughs> um, it used to be that you can look these up on uh, chunk base, but you can't do that right now. So you're probably just gonna have to get lucky and find one. Now, in my case, um, I do have one of my community members and admins, Crazy Breeze. He knows how to use some tools that are pretty technical to use, and he's able to look up spawners with it. And he found me a spawner that's, I think, back somewhere right here. I need to dig in this direction, and a spawner I will find. Ooh, and diamonds I will find too. Let's get those guys up. And if I'm correct, it should be right through here. Yes, okay. Oh, oh, there's a skeleton. He's found us. Get rid of that guy. And let's pop ourselves in. So first thing that we need to do. Oh, this is open to a... Look at the location of this. What? Wait a second. I've been through here. Where is this? Any event. Oh, wow. Look at all the gunpowder. We got gunpowder. We got string. We got iron ingots. We got all sorts of good things in these chests here. Music disc. C418, we need to start using those here pretty soon. Enchanted golden apple, oh yeah, we got lots of good stuff here. Let's take, maybe I should take all the stuff back before we go over the next portion of things. Okay, let's do this thing in steps. So we already went over step number one, and that was to actually locate one of these. Step number two is once you find the spawner, you need to shut it off. We kind of already done that one too. If you just put one single torch on the top of it right here, it's going to be shut off. That's because the spawner will spawn based on the light level in the room. Now, to keep a mob spawner from spawning, you need a single torch on top of it, and that will provide a high enough light level to keep it from spawning mobs. You need a light level of 12 or higher. So what you'll see, if I break this torch, mobs will instantly start spawning. I place the torch down. I don't have to worry about mob spawns because the light level is 12 or higher in the area. And then the area in which mobs can spawn is slightly different between Bedrock Edition and Java Edition. Um, it is actually a square on Java Edition and it is more of a like a diamond shape or a like a, a square at a 45 degree angle on Bedrock Edition. So since we're on Bedrock, what I'm gonna be doing first is I wanna show you guys the area in which these mobs can spawn in because this is important if you're ever going to do your own design and not just simply copy what I'm doing. And here you can see the entire spawnable area on Bedrock Edition, if I take that out, I can get rid of the torch and mobs are not spawning now. That's because every single spawn spot is blocked. So this is another way you can permanently shut off a spawner. I mean, you could always just break it too, but that's against the rules in Minecraft. You're not allowed to break spawners. It's just like an unspoken thing. Make sure you don't break them. Um, and then on Java Edition, basically instead of it being this, um, like the sideways square where it kind of connects diagonally. Instead, you make it a full nine by nine square. So you would have to fill in all of the area around there, connecting all the sides together. And that's the difference between Bedrock Edition and Java Edition when it comes to the spawning of these spawners. Now, what we're gonna do in our case is we're actually gonna use that area, that whole area anyways, because it makes it a lot easier to like set up our water streams and just overall configure the farm. So I'm gonna clear out this whole square area and then we're gonna talk about the area in which the spawner mob cap comes into play. Okay, next is to know how close do you have to be to a spawner to activate it? So first of all, activate it, what does that mean? Well, you see how it's got the little fire inside of it, which by the way, terrible parity change. It used to be this, this little fire would actually like put out a little bit of light and it doesn't now, so that's a shame. But once you get more than 15 blocks away, the fire cuts out. That means the spawner's not working anymore. That's gonna matter later because when we set up our AFK location or our location where we're going to be killing the skeletons, we have to make sure we are within 15 blocks of that spawner. Otherwise, it's not gonna be spawning anything. Next thing to know is the area in which counts against the cap space. So 
really quite simply, it's an extra three blocks out in each direction from the spawnable location. So if you make this square, and on Bedrock Edition, this one's a square too. If you go more than one, two, three blocks out in that direction, that fourth block no longer takes up the mob cap. Now, what does that mean? Well, there is a mob cap for spawners. If there are more, if there are six or more skeletons within six, within that range, the one, two, three, four, plus another three, so seven, within seven blocks horizontally, and then within five blocks down and up of this thing, it will not spawn more mobs. It's not going to. So what that means is anytime we plan or do anything with the spawner, we need to get the mobs further away than five blocks horizontally or then seven blocks horizontally and five blocks down. So what we need to do is we need to dig down far enough to where when these mobs, these skeletons spawn in, they drop down outside of the zone that's the mob cap. So we need, know we need to go down from the spawner, one, counting the spawner, two, counting the block we're standing on, three, four, five, anywhere in this area, the mobs can still spawn in. Now six, their head would still technically be in the area. Seven, now they're completely out of the zone, but if we have water here, they might bob up and down. So we're gonna go down an eighth block total. That is eight counting where the block that the spawner is on, like that actual level right there. So we're gonna dig out a whole entire area this size. Okay, we've gone the proper amount down. It should be seven blocks down from the from the bottom of the spawner. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is how much we have dug. What this means is that no matter how fast or slow that we kill these skeletons, the spawner will always be actively spawning mobs because the cap will always be below six. The mobs will spawn it up there and they'll drop down to here where eventually we're going to make a water stream to make things flow through. And a water stream is what we need to make. But first, I want to decide. I, I kind of had an idea in my head for what I was going to do with this. But now that I see that it's open to this area over here, I don't know if my idea is going to going to end up changing now. OK, I've given myself the ability to walk around here. I've decided that I'm not going to do anything on this side necessarily. I want to keep things a little bit closer to my base, which is out in this direction. And maybe we make some kind of like cool viewing area or something over here, I don't know. But uh, the bulk of the farm is gonna be going this direction. We've got our water in, simply put, we've just taken water sources and put them straight across. So whenever a skeleton drops, he's gonna flow in this direction. Now, the next step I recommend that you take is you need to figure out where you're gonna be actually bringing these skeletons to. I always like to keep things on the same level as my spawner. That way I can get as far away from it as possible while still actually keeping it active. So I know that if I stand right here on this block, it's active. But if I start to move off of this block and back towards this one, it's not. So really, in terms of like where I want to stand, I at least want to be here. And really what I was thinking was it might be fun to be able to like stand on any side of where I'm gonna be eventually dropping these skeletons down to, which would mean that I would want right here to be the back side of where I bring the skeletons to and over here to be the front side. So let's give myself a little bit extra wiggle room and let's say we're gonna drop the skeletons in right here. I'm just gonna mark that like that. That way I have plenty of room to move around here be able to kill skeletons and whatnot, and then have the farm still be active. Okay, next thing is we have to plan on where we're going to be bringing the skeletons up. Because what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna end up doing a drop kill or a half of a heart drop to where we can kill them ourselves. To do that, we're gonna need to take the skeletons up high and then bring them over and then drop them down here. So what I did was I went and measured the one, two, three, four, that was the spawnable area. And then we know we go at additional three to three. And this is all the area in which the, the mob cap can be taken up by the spawner, which means if we bring the skeletons up at this block and they travel up a tube here, they will never be counted towards this cap at any point during their travels. So we've marked that off with a piece of white stained glass for now, just so we can keep track of it. And that's going to help me figure out exactly what I'm going to do with this area right here. 
right? So what we'll do is we'll just, I'm just gonna carve all of this out and that's got me to right here. So next thing we need to do is we need to take the skeletons as they fall here and we need to bring them over and we need to bring them up what will be a little tube right here, right? So we actually want them to drop over this edge, but I wanna keep them from getting stuck on each other because it's possible that when we're pushing them with water in this little middle junction right here, there could be a skeleton coming in both directions at the same time. They're going to get stuck, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to have one side, this side, just drop them down by one block. And then over here, we're going to drop this side down by three blocks, just like this. Now, these guys, they'll fall over here and they'll flow this way. And then any skeletons that are over here, they'll be able to plop down on, on, on these guys' heads, right? So that'll be good. That'll work exactly how we need it to. Um, it looks like our water flows the perfect distance right here. So we can actually leave that. Let me get myself back up here. We're gonna put water right here. And I actually, I need a button. I, I don't have any way to make a button. Let me go, I'm gonna go get a stack of wood. And now that we have a button, we're just gonna place it right here, just like that. That'll block that water from flowing over. These uh, skeletons will come over, they'll fall down right here. These skeletons, they'll come over, they'll flow through right here. And uh, just to make things work out really nice and simple, we're actually going to bring this down one more, just like that. And I think what I'm going to do, just to make sure we have a good flow going here, is I'm going to place a button right here too to block that water. And we'll have a fresh flow of water going this way, just like this. And that should very easily keep all of our mobs flowing, all of our skeletons flowing to this spot right here, where we are going to end up taking them up a certain number of blocks. And specifically what we want is we want them to land right here at this spot and have dropped 22 blocks down. Because if they block drop 22 blocks down they will have half a heart left which is perfect and then we can set up a little contraption somewhere right in here to where if they drop down a 23rd block they'll just they'll just straight up die so we'll have two ways of killing the skeletons instead of one so what we'll do is we will dig up 23 blocks from where we stand right here right now if you see the y coordinate we're negative 24 so actually 22 blocks from here so we need to go all the way up to negative two and then going up to negative two, we will go over one, two, three, four, and five blocks. And then we'll dig straight down to get ourselves back down to that spot. Okay, and we have our rise up area. We have our 22 block drop from all the way up there where they land right here. We're kind of almost done with a lot of the like general mechanics of this, right? One other thing we're gonna have happen is we're going to end up getting a block of uh, soul sand to put right here because we do need to push the mobs up with soul sand that way they actually get pushed up by the bubbles that are created by that and go all the way up to the top there and then we can close off a lot of this section right here and we're going to do that by actually putting a button here and a button here and just kind of fill in this little area that we left and I always like to see things so we'll end up putting some glass right here and really in terms of like all the mob moving and that sort of thing we're, we're pretty close to done so the next step that I want to do. We don't need to necessarily move the mobs yet because we don't have like a way to easily kill them and like where are they gonna be dropping down and that sort of thing, right? So uh, let's go ahead and let's figure out this area right here. I'm gonna need a couple of things. I'm gonna get some hoppers, a sticky piston and a lever. Okay, so I'm a little unsure about where some things are gonna go, but I, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards this direction, right? Like maybe storage will be somewhere over here. We're not gonna need a ton, right? But what I want to do, we're going to kind of wing this while we do it together. So I'm going to knock that out. I'm going to knock this out. I'm going to knock these two blocks out. I want to go ahead and just kind of set up where my hoppers are going to be going. I'm going to have a hopper going this way. So those are facing into each other. Of course, my pack is off that shows that those are facing in a certain direction, but they're going this direction. I'm going to place a hopper facing down right there as well. I can, I can actually just cover this one back up. And on this side right here, we can knock this out. We can knock this out. And then we can put a sticky piston right here like this. We'll find some way to, to decorate it and make it look good in a moment. But what this is going to allow me to do is just imagine here for a moment that we have some type of drop shoot. I don't know if it's going to be glass or I might have an idea for something else um, in the near future. But just imagine that we have some type of drop shoot here where the skeletons are going to drop into. Uh, we'll have some method at which we can like actually reach them to hit them and kill them. And then... Um, if we want them to instead drop down and die, what we're going to do is we're going to use a sticky piston to pull this hopper out the way, just like that. 
and now the skeletons will fall on that block right there. That block will kill them. They fall on that one, they die. They fall on this one, they have half of a heart. We can simply just punch them or hit them with our uh, looting three sword and it will kill them that way and we get more drops because we get the looting effect. So we'll have two different ways to kill these guys with this little contraption right here, which also looks really weird because as we move at, it 100% looks like it has water in it. Why does it look like it has water in it? So the next thing that I want to do in this, and now's a good time for you to do it too if you plan on it, is I kind of want to decorate the area. I want to make it look good because we want to be able to close this up and call it done. Uh, we want to be able to set up our water stream that's going up, going over, and then coming down. But I don't want to quite do that yet because I might end up breaking these blocks out and then water's going to go everywhere, etc. Right? So before we start doing a lot of that complicated stuff that's going to possibly cause a mess if we as we start to break things and move things around, let's actually go through and let's do a little bit of decorating in here. And I think what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna do that on live stream, just like I do most of my building and decorating. I have fun doing it on stream, so that way you guys can see it in its full form by going back and watching the live stream. So you should see a link pop up in the top right-hand corner of your uh, screen right now. That'll link you over to the live stream where you can either watch the whole process unfold or you can use the chapters that uh, we insert in and those chapters will take you to specific portions. But what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna go eat some lunch first and then we're gonna kick off a live stream and we're gonna build this place up and make it look awesome. Okay, I'm not quite ready to show off the area yet, but I have been working here. And one thing I wanted to change or show you guys was this little lip where, we're, we were, where we were gonna be falling down into the little drop chamber here. Use stairs. Do not use so, like regular solid blocks. Do not use stat slabs. Use stairs because it's gonna make it so when the mobs get down this far, they don't really fight their way back up as much. It just kind of like plop down, okay? So stairs is definitely the way to go. It's going to make your farm more efficient. Okay, to get the full functionality, we do have a few more things to do. We're, we're getting close. You see, I've done a lot of decorating in here and it, it looks really good. And I think I'm gonna save some of the like additional decorating for a upcoming episode because I got I got something I kind of want to like officially like do an episode on and show everybody how to do. But to finish up the functionality here, we need to do a few things. First of all, I had this lever on top of there. A little clunky feeling, right? To move this back and forth. So instead what we're gonna do is we're going to place redstone dust here, here, and here. What this is doing is making it so when we turn on this lever, since this block then has power, it powers that redstone dust. And that redstone dust will then go down over. It'll power this block right here, which will also power this piston, as you can see. Really important though, you cannot put a full block right here at this location because a full block will actually block the redstone signal you see here no redstone no redstone doesn't work right but if i put a half slab here that redstone dust is still able to travel down and still able to get over there so we can do that now we have a pretty concealed i mean you still see some of it but for the most part a pretty concealed way to turn this thing onto a one hit or a drop kill system okay so now we need to take the skeletons that drop down here we need to bring them over up here, they're gonna go up, they're gonna come over, and they're gonna fall back down. Now, we need to bring a few supplies with us when we do this, so make sure you gather these. You're gonna want a few buttons, I grabbed four. You're gonna want some kelp too, and that's gonna depend on how far up you're taking the mobs. Uh, I got more than enough kelp here, and several water buckets, to that way you don't have to keep going back and forth to get water, and you're gonna want some soul sand. So I'm just gonna drop down on my little chute here, and I'm going to take this block out that I put in the way. Um, you can see where we already blocked off the water flow here and we put a stair here so that way when the skeletons are kind of bouncing here they can more easily fit under here if you have a stair so that's the purpose for that uh, we actually need to not start from the bottom but start from the top so i'm going to pillar myself up now once you get up here to the top you're going to want to stop the water flow for just a moment here okay uh, we're actually going to just very simply we're going to stop it right here put a button right there now we're going to end up placing a water bucket here you can see the water's gonna flow over. This is what's gonna drop our skeletons when they get up here. But to get them up here, we're gonna have to do something special. We're gonna actually go back down that chute that we just pillared up. Once we get to the bottom there, we're going to take our kelp. We're going to use that to create water sources. So if we take the kelp and we place it down at every spot here, it'll turn all of this water into water source blocks. Perfect. Now that everything's a water source, we can work our way back down to the bottom. We can knock out the kelp we don't need that anymore we could take this block out of the bottom and we could put a piece of soul sand here 
the soul sand is going to create a bubble elevator. Basically what will happen, and I'm going to demonstrate to you right now, skeletons will come through here. One's going to get stuck right here, but the second one that comes through and it's okay that one gets stuck here. It doesn't slow down the farm at all. We talked about that earlier. When the second one gets pushed over, it's going to push the first skeleton over and he's going to shoot straight up to shoot. Once he gets up here, he's going to then be in here. He's going to flow over and then he's going to drop just like that. Now, if I was a skeleton without feather falling boots on, then I would have died right here. And then again, if we would have the lever switched in that hopper right here in the spot that we fell into, it would have left him with a half of a heart, which we could punch and kill or hit with our looting sword and kill. So now that part's all done. Mobs go down, mobs go over, mobs go up, mobs come back down again. Next thing we need to do is we need to actually get our items from here over to here where I'm going to be putting storage. And since we don't really get a ton of different drops here, I don't think I'm going to do any sort of item filter or anything like that. For me, this farm is strictly just to get some arrows in the early game until we get like a better method to get them. Like we'll make a general mob farm or, or something else that's going to get us a ton of different arrows, right? So we're going to need a way to get these stuff from here over to there. And I think what we're going to actually do here, I'm just going to carve up like a decent amount of this floor just to kind of get it out the way is we're going to end up needing to make a elevator and we're going to use a similar method to the soul sand method that we used there. Um, first though, we're going to, I didn't even think about this. No, we're going to be able to do this without using ice. Sometimes that's going to be necessary. What I do need though is I need several hoppers. So I forgot to bring those. Let me go grab those real quick. Okay. Just so we could tell where these are going to go. I'm going to put the chests in first. Okay. So we're going to go chest, 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 chest. And I think, I think we'll go three high and then three wide as well. This should give us enough like chests to store everything that we should ever need here. Um, if you want to know how to make like an item sorter or something like that, like that to go here, go back to my item filter episode, my item sorter episode, and you'll get to see that a little bit better. Um, but for now, we need to go ahead. We need to throw our hoppers in the back of the chests like this. Oh, hold on. Hold on. We need an item flow first, right? So let's knock those out. Let's flow items in this direction. And then let's go in the back of the chests. And then we're going to want to take a dropper and we're going to send the items upwards. We need to make sure we have blocks here to make sure items don't get out. Uh, we are going to run our hopper line straight into that like so. Now, all of our items are flowing over to our dropper here. Uh, we need to get ourselves some space around it. So let's get that space together. And there's a number of different ways that you can do this. I'm going to show you a compact way to do it with uh, just repeaters and uh, comparators. Uh, there's probably there's going to be easier ways that you could do it with observers. They cause a little bit more lag, so I'm just going to keep the easy route. Not everybody might might not have observers or want to make them. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a comparator out of here. They're going to go into a repeater and then we're going to go into another comparator and we're going to loop this signal around like this. Now that is constantly going off. We're going to throw a, another redstone dust right here and a repeater right there. And now it is going to quickly shoot out everything that's inside of here until it's empty. Which it now is perfect. So this will serve as our redstone to send our items upwards and we could go ahead. We could fill in this area. So no, we don't have to worry about mobs spawning in here or I don't know anything like that. Right. So get rid of that. That's all gone. Now we need to move the items upwards. So we're going to do instead of using the soul sand, items naturally move up water whenever everything is a water source. So what we can do is we can actually block off this area. And our items are going to come up here and flow over in that direction. And we don't need any kind of like stops or anything like that. So all we should need to do here, let me build myself up a little bit higher so I don't interrupt the water flow here. We should be able to use kelp like we did before to make ourselves a infinite water source. So we're going to do that. Our items will come over this way and flow down there. And if I come back over to here, I'm going to flow water around, but it's fine. There's no redstone for it to break over in this direction. We're going to place our kelp down just like this. Take it back up. And now everything there is a water source. So what we should see happen is if we close this off now and I throw in a bunch of kelp into the hopper, let's see that kelp come up slowly but surely. And then there it goes. It makes its way over. So now we have all of our items coming over to our item uh, system here. 
and everything will go into this first chest. And we are now at the point where I've turned this thing on and made it active. We got rid of the torch there. Also, you need some blocks to go above the spawner. You cannot use chains. It looks really cool because obviously it'd be cool to just have a chain hanging it, but the skeletons, they can get stuck on the top. So you're going to need to use solid blocks down to connect it. And that'll keep uh, skeletons from getting stuck on the top and taking up your mob cap. But it's on. As you can see, it's spawning in skeletons. And as they spawn in, they're going up to shoot here. They're moving over and they're coming down to shoot here. And we are collecting them right now to be able to, uh, there went another, to be able to kill them with our sword to get that looting effect. And I've been sitting here while editing the video and periodically killing these guys off to get drops. Now, since we didn't go with any type of a filter, I do have to sometimes go through here and clean things out, right? I can just on PC, I can just hit the Q button, drop all the stuff on the ground. It'll despawn. Um, you can obviously do a lot of different things with this if you want to. You can like save the bows and use them to make dispensers, which at some point I probably, I probably will. You can smelt down the gold to make it into gold nuggets to then get yourself gold ingots, which is fine as well. Um, but we're just going to go through and just kind of empty things out periodically and collect a bunch of arrows and bones. Honestly, even the amount of arrows I have here will last me quite a long time. And as these guys drop in, I can either open this one and kill them. Sometimes if there's a lot of skeletons in here, those items, they're going to kind of pop out and have to throw them back in. Or I can just kind of open up from the side here. They can't see me, but I can see them. They just kind of creep over, kill them just like this, and all the items will stay in and they can't, they can't shoot me from there. All those items, they'll go through and they've been filtering through perfectly fine. And as far as this episode is concerned, we're all done here, people. I hope you had a whole lot of fun making this farm. I love spawner farms. They're not the fastest thing in the world, but they are a joy to make, and they are really easy to do in the early game. Make sure you join me for the next episode because we're not done with this area. We need to make it look better. We need a ceiling. We need better looking walls, and we need some structured lighting because right now, this place, it's looking, it's looking kind of dull, and it can look a whole lot better. So I thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and click that like button. Drop me a comment down in the comment section below. Let me know some things you would like to see or just drop a comment saying hello. Either way is perfectly fine. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, click that subscribe button. Also check your notifications. YouTube likes to change them to personalize. You're gonna wanna go ahead and press the all button for your uh, notifications and I'll see you all next time. Bye.